Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Ranking the Beatles. This is a series where I rank my least favorite to favorite songs off of each UK Beatles studio album. Today we've come to the final of the 13 Beatles UK studio albums, the album Let It Be. This album was released in 1970 and was not actually intended to be released um, at all. The bits and pieces that had made up the album Get Back had kind of been shelved and discarded, and uh, the Beatles went ahead with Abbey Road and released that instead. Um, but after the Beatles broke up, Beatles management hired Phil Spector, who took the bits and pieces of the Get Back sessions added his own personal wall of sound touch to it, and then released it as Let It Be. Some of these recordings on Let It Be were done from the famous Abbey Road rooftop concerts. Some of them were just little snippets of uh, jams. And then a few were reimaginings of some singles that had come out um, before the Let It Be album. So there are 12 songs, and I will be ranking them from least favorite to favorite. If you've enjoyed this series, I plan on doing the Past Masters series over the weekend. And the Past Masters were uh, two albums that came out in the 80s that compiled all of the 45 A and B side uh, singles. And that will be a very challenging task because some of the singles are the Beatles' best songs. But let's not put the horse before the cart here and let's rank let it be all right the first two are really easy to rank because well because they're not really uh, they're not really songs they're they're more like little snippets from jams so number 12 we have dig it and it's just John kind of half talking half singing it's very short it's just a segment of a jam, and actually, the uh, Peter Jackson is, of course, um, in charge of this Get Back um, documentary that's going to air in November. And uh, to commemorate that, they're having a 50th anniversary, or it would be 51st anniversary deluxe, super deluxe edition that's coming out in October. That has like where this dig it came from the full jam and I have that pre-ordered and I'm really looking forward to that but yeah as of now dig it is just a little transitional uh, snippet from a jam so it's not really a song same could be said for number 11 number 11 Maggie May it's a folk song but this is just a little snippet of that too and it and it's very lo-fi and unproduced and uh, it, I think it was just intended to kind of show like them goofing around in the studio both of these tracks so they're clearly number a la 12 and 11, and honestly, they could be flip-flop because I, they don't really even count. Really, we have 10 songs that we're ranking here, okay? So if you're uh, only listening to the songs that I deem are quality, you can just skip those, unless you want to just listen to the whole record from top to bottom. All right, number 10. Number 10. I do like this song. As a matter of fact, this entire record has really risen, in my opinion, over the past... 10 to 15 years. It used to be one of my, I used to rank this maybe either at the bottom, so I don't, I'm not counting Yellow Submarine, but I used to rank this either at the bottom or near the bottom with like With the Beatles and um, Beatles for Sale. But uh, I will be doing my full ranking of the albums after I finish Past Masters. That could come this weekend or it could come early next week. And I actually would like to have some props for that. So uh, we can maybe cut away from doing this spreadsheet with a little screencastify and do just maybe a full video of me. Oh, never mind, that might scare you away. All right. Number 10. For You Blue, George Harrison song. Nice little blues tune. It's acoustic. It's very enjoyable, but it's number 10 for me. Number 9, we have One After 909. This was if not the first, one of the first songs the Beatles ever wrote. They wrote this like in 1962, which is kind of cool that they you know, were able to then finally, and they have some One After 909 demos like on the anthology series, like during the time that they were recording Love Me Do in their, in their debut, you know, Please Please Me. 
but it was pretty neat that they were able to finally get this one studio recorded and then it's on their last album so it kind of bookends their career it's a traditional early 60s rocker and uh it, it's a fun one and performed well but it's you know immature beatles writing number eight another george harrison song i me mine i love the billy preston organ on this i love some of the stu- the Phil Spector studio stuff, and I know some people hate that, but um, I do like the Phil Spe- – overall, I like how Phil Spector treated this album. I mean, he, he took fragments and bits and pieces and, and really made made it into a proper album. Um, but, yeah, it's never, it's actually a really short song. If it wasn't for all, like, the jam the, – the instrumental parts and stuff like that, it's really, I think, the actual song itself, you know, the, the melody and the lyrics and all that, it's like – it's – 30 second song 45 second song but all the little transitions make it you know a two two and a half three minute song all right number seven dig a pony it's a good john song some people really hate this song it, it's a grower for me and uh it's number seven number six this might be disappointing to some of you but I'm going to put Across the Universe as, as number six. And Across the Universe was released as a single previous to this. So you got one that has the bird chirping and one that doesn't. And to be honest, it doesn't matter to me. The, the song is is just kind of boring. I do respect that it's super art, artsy, the it, beautiful lyrics, and, and sung well by John, but I don't know. I liked it more back in the day, and maybe it's just – a little bit of burnout because I've heard it so much and that will happen you know just like dig a pony I probably back in the day would have stuck that down here with you know for you blue or number 10 and actually that one has risen in my opinion too recently that was always one of my least favorites but yeah across the universe might have been in the top three ten years ago but not today all right now we're in the top five and number five is two of us the opening track it's a beautiful John and Paul duet. It's an acoustic number. has a very low production value, just like two friends sitting out back by a fire and uh, and singing about you know the good times that they've had. So it's it's definitely kind of a bittersweet song because at this point the Beatles had already broken up, um, but it shows that they still have a lot of chemistry. So I do like it. Um, number five. Number four. All right, now we're into solid gold classics. Uh, songs that I love, songs that I put on most mixtapes. And I do want to say, they really goofed up with this album when they didn't put Don't Let Me Down, which was uh, John B-Side. As a matter of fact, it's the B-Side to my number four, because number four was also released as a single prior to the album. But for whatever reason, they didn't include it on Let It Be, even though it was recorded during the same sessions as all of these. But... Uh, Don't Let Me Down is a great song. Highly recommend you listen to that one if you haven't heard it. I'm sure you have. But number four, we're going to put Get Back, which was actually the intended title to the album before it was shelved. Uh, Kind of a country, upbeat country rocker. Great Billy Preston. I think he's playing the the Wurlitzer or Fender Rhodes, but electric piano. Paul has kind of a funny a funny tone to his voice. He kind of has a country country tone. Um, it rocks. It's a fun song to play live too. So get back is number four. Number three, I'm gonna go with Let It Be. That might be a surprise to a lot of people. And at one point, this was maybe my favorite Beatles ballad. That has since changed. I told you that For No One off of Revolver is my favorite now, but. This, I mean, I, I've played this song. I've sang this song. I, it, it, it's just, it, it's like Hey Jude. It's like you've heard it so many times, you don't really want to hear it again or don't want to hear it very often. But no, it's no, there's no denying it's a great song. It's, a, it's like a gospel song, and, and, you know, it's one of Paul's standards. But it's number three for me, and that may be wrong for you, but it's number three for me in 2021. Number two. This is a, okay, <laughs> Some people despise this song, and I think they despise it particularly because of the Phil Spector orchestral treatment of it. Now, in 20, 2003, 
uh, Paul released Let It Be Naked, which took all of these Phil Spector stuff and stripped it off. So it was more like how Paul had intended it to be. And I believe George Martin helped produce that. I, I'm 90% sure I should have done research before I said that. But I remember when it came out, 2003, because I was student teaching and I was listening to NPR and they did like a preview of it and I went out and I bought it. And, and a lot of people actually preferred the Let It Be Naked. But I do like the Phil Spector stuff. And uh, my number two is the long and winding road. It's got that AM pop, you know, almost like Glenn Campbell, Wichita lineman. Uh, that's kind of that beautiful or uh, Richard Harris, uh, MacArthur Park, you know, that, that beautiful, like, orchestrated stuff. And I love that middle section. Many times I've been alone and many times I've cried. Paul apparently hates this arrangement because he hates what Phil Spector did, but I think it's a beautiful song. I didn't used to like – it was not one of my favorites when I was younger. I thought it was sappy and cheesy, but I, I've become sappy and cheesy as I've gotten older, and uh, it's my strong number two. I much prefer it over Let It Be at this point. And every time I listen to it, it's like it's a, it's, it's a fresh song. So that may change 10 years from now, and they may flip back. But my number one, and I don't think this is going to change anytime soon, is – I've got a feeling, a feeling deep inside, oh yeah. Paul delivers one of his best performances. This is one of those songs, and if you've watched my other Beatles rankings, this is one we have two fragments of songs that get put together, where John does that, everybody has a good year, in the middle, and then they come together like a partner song, and they sing them at the same time. I absolutely love that. And there's this cool little bridge, too, before we get into John's section, where Paul is just screaming scream singing at the highest range and honestly i love singing this song and i would perform this song all the time this would be an absolute staple in my repertoire but that bridge section getting into the john section it's too high for me uh i mean i could sing it and then i wouldn't have a voice after that uh it's just it's incredible it's kind of like his oh darling performance just incredible so that's my number one i've got a feeling and if you don't know this song, because it would not be a, one that you would hear on the radio unless you were listening to like XM or Sirius or something like that, it is an amazing song. Oh, just absolutely love it. And uh, I love it more by the year. So here we go. That's my ranking. Dig it, Maggie May, For You Blue, One After 909, I Mean Mine, Dig a Pony, Across the Universe, Two of Us, Get Back, Let It Be, The Long and Winding Road, and I've Got a Feeling. And that concludes the studio, UK studio releases of Ranking the Beatles. Thank you, everybody that have watched these videos and those of you that have reached out and said that they've enjoyed it. That has made it all worthwhile. I would be doing it anyway because I've always wanted to um, sit down and actually rank my, my favorite songs. But uh, I don't know. I may not have been motivated to continue without your positive feedback and support. So we're going to keep it going. We're going to do Past Masters this weekend, and then we're going to rank the Beatles albums, not songs, but albums, and who knows, maybe we'll tackle another group that I know the entire discography of. But for now, have a good weekend, and happy listening. <laughs>